Okay, time for some classwork, classwork contemplations. Now, let me give a disclaimer before we get going here. I don't know that much about this stuff, but I do know the cumulative of the stuff, and that's what I want to talk to you about. If you want specifics, you really, really need to see a financial planner or a financial advisor. I am not that. I just know how my grandfather got successful and became a millionaire, never earning more than $30,000 in a year. I know how my buddies who I taught with built up lots of money, lots of money by doing the things I'm going to talk to you about. And I know what some financial advisors have told me. So my real goal here is to give you some things that are factual, not too many, and then to whet your interest so that you might pursue it on your own and develop a plan on your own. Okay. So that's what we're going to do with this for the rest of today. And then we're also going to do one other thing I didn't list on there. I just want to do <clears throat> a little bit of work with equations because I figure at some point they have to be on your practice exam. It shouldn't be too difficult for you. And I want to stay on top of it. Okay. So the first thing is you've probably heard of the term 401k. It's a retirement fund. And everybody will tell you that you need a 401k. But a 401k is if you work for an employer that's there to make to make profit, okay? And the way a 401k is, <clears throat> is your employer, like let's say for argument's sake that you work for a supermarket and you want money put into a 401k, they will pay you, take out the taxes, and then they'll take the money you want in the 401k and they'll put it in the 401k. I, on the other hand, had a 403b. <clears throat> and that's because I worked for a public institution. If you work for a nonprofit, a public institution, um, research place, religious place, scientific place, basically something that's for the communal good rather than the personal profit, then you are eligible for 403b. And this is the difference. With a 403b, I get my paycheck before taxes are taken out. They take the amount of money, which in my case was $300 every check. They take it out. And the very first thing they do before they take taxes out of my money, before they do anything, the very first thing they do is they send that 300 bucks to my account. Why is that important? Because part of that 300 should have been taxed if it was a 401k. So that money sits in my account. Now, we talked about the miracle of compound interest because you're making interest not only on the principal, but you're making interest on the interest. Now imagine if you're making interest on the principal and making interest on interest and making interest on the tax money that was never collected. Yeah. Out of that um, $300, probably, I guess, maybe about 75 of it would have been tax money. But now I get to make money on top of that. Now, the bad side is as you when you go to withdraw the money, you're going to pay taxes at that point in time. So it's not like you're never going to pay taxes. But in the meanwhile, that miracle of compound interest is building lots and lots and lots of money you never would have gotten in a 401k that you will get in a 403b. For example, the 403b is starts with the same money every time, but it's the purple graph. So you can see how much more money you're making out of the deal because it's a 403b. If you do go into a career as a teacher, you want to get a 403b. Very important to get one. And the sooner you can max it out, the better off you are. Teachers are qualified because they're public employees. Okay. It grows so much faster than a traditional 401k. Now, the next thing I really truly don't know much about, um, they came this uh, became a more common investment tool later into my career. So I never really followed it. But there is a thing called the Roth IRA. And the really cool thing about a Roth IRA is you never pay taxes on a Roth IRA, any monies and interest that you earn from a Roth IRA. So you're only allowed to put so much money a year in a Roth IRA. You're not allowed to put a tremendous amount of money. But like... When I built this house and I took money out of my 403B, I had to pay taxes on that money. So if I took out $100,000, whatever, 25 or 30 of the $100,000 went to the government. It didn't go to the house, okay? If I had had a Roth IRA with that much money and I took out $100,000, I get to keep the whole $100,000. 
Now, there are variable interest rates and variable programs that you should talk to a financial planner about, and he can advise you or she can advise you how to best allocate that money and what works best for your lifestyle. But I do want you to understand that this option is available. Um, it's important. Now, and there are so many laws involved. Like I live in New York State, and as a New York State employee, which a teacher is, when I retired, I was allowed to get like the first $19,500 tax-free that I pulled out of my retirement account. So for me, if I'm only going to pull out, and that's of a year, it's $19,500 a year. So if I'm only planning on pulling out, say, $18,000 a year, a Roth IRA might not be a big deal to me if it doesn't earn the kind of interest that a 403B earns. But if you live in a state which says, no, 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 no. You're paying state income tax on that. And if you're like New York, where they have a high state income tax, then he might say, hey, listen, you're better off with the Roth IRA. So all of these options do exist. And it's up to you to figure out what works best for you. All right. Now, benefits. <laughs> benefits. I, when I first started teaching, I had no clue what benefits are. I just know my dad used to say to me, well, it's really good that you're going to have benefits. Benefits are really important. And they are. Um, I used to work... In, in an intramural program. I used to work at a butcher shop. I worked covering flowers. I worked with a newspaper route. I worked um, at a butcher shop. I worked as a bus boy. Man, I worked, I worked plenty of jobs. I never had benefits. All of a sudden, I literally graduate college and bam, I'm starting my teaching career. And they're saying, hey, wait a minute, you get this thing called health insurance. You, if you're absent and you don't come to work, I didn't take a day off my first three years of teaching. No matter how, I, at one point my leg was in a brace because I heard it playing sports. And I came to work every day. Why? I, I used to get migraines at that point in my life. I came to work every day. Why? Because you don't get paid if you don't go to work. And then I found out three years into my career that, oh yeah, you do. <laughs> you would have been paid if you stayed home. I said, you're kidding me. I never heard of such a thing. So. What are some things that you get from uh, benefits from teaching? Well, you kind of get a paid vacation. You have the option to get a big check at the end of June. And uh, well, actually, I don't think Jersey does. New York does. They can give you a really big check at the end of June, and uh, that'll tide you through the summer. Um, you get some sick leave. You get health benefits, health insurance. Um, you get some dental insurance, vision insurance. You get a retirement plan. Of the pension that I have, I, I couldn't be alive without a pension. I'd be working all over the place. Uh, child care is involved. You get a life insurance program. I had a life insurance program when I worked that insured me of about $440,000 a year that, that it came right out of my paycheck. I never saw it. And even now, I don't pay for it for the rest of my life, but I still have $220,000 insurance through that. So when I do die, which is a guaranteed um, as they say, the only two things in life guaranteed are death and taxes. So when I do die, that's $220,000, plus I took out separate life insurance. Other than that, that'll make sure that my wife or if my wife should predecease me, my children are taken care of. So the next thing I want to talk about, oh, so basically, you want a job that provides benefits. My son, right now, my son makes a lot of money, my older son. He works on a fishing boat. If you ever saw... Um, a perfect storm. He does that kind of thing for a type of fish called a tile fish. And it's real hard work. And he makes serious money, very serious money. However, he doesn't have benefits. So at one point he got MRSA. And the MRSA hung around longer than it should have because he didn't want to pay the health bills associated with staying in the hospital a couple of days um, because he doesn't have health insurance. So you want to make sure that whatever job you have offers Things like a retirement plan, things like um, health insurance, things like child care, and, and that you can go to, if you're truly sick, you can go to work. Um, we were able to accumulate our sick time and so on and so forth. Pay yourself first is very important. You become your own emergency fund. If you, if you don't have any money in the bank and something goes wrong, you have no choice but to take out the credit card. If on the other hand, every single paycheck, the very first thing you do is you pay yourself money. You say, okay, $100 out of this check is going in the bank. Well, five years later, at $100 a check, you've got yourself, oh, let's see, that's $200 a month, $2,500. Five years later, you got $12,500 sitting in an account. You can pay for your own emergencies. <laughs> you don't need a credit card. 
That's a beautiful thing because you will not get any debt over the deal. Now, emergency fund basics, you set aside money for unexpected expenses. It keeps you from having to borrow money. That's so important because when you borrow money, you pay money. Um, you want to have enough set aside for three to six months expenses. Now, as a teacher with sick time where you could be out for like, we could save a full year's worth of sick time. That meant that I could earn my entire salary for a year if I missed work every day for a year. Um, so I didn't necessarily have to have three to six months worth of expenses, but you know, it was good to have six weeks to eight weeks worth of expenses and you keep it in a high yield savings account. You want to be able to take it where you can take that money out at some particular point in time. All right. So those are some funding basics that are important for you to know about. Um, Keep in mind, that's not the only money that you should save. It's just one of the important reasons for saving. Notice in the little picture on the right there, you got some money to save just to have as a savings account, some for retirement, and some for emergency planning. We have one more video to go in this, and I'll discuss that with you in a few minutes.